Okay, everybody, today we're going to be talking about how DNA is organized in a cell as the cell goes through its schedule. We call that the cell cycle. So take a minute and jot this down. Okay, first off, you have to know what the cell cycle is. The cell cycle is basically the cell schedule. It's the series of events that cells go through as they grow and divide. Just like you have a schedule to make sure you get everything done, the cell has a schedule too that it has to go through to make sure everything gets done properly as the cell goes through its, its daily life, which uh, is basically doing the function it's supposed to do, but at times they get signaled to grow and divide and make more cells. And just think about it for a minute. If you were going to go from one eukaryotic cell with a nucleus and DNA, and it was going to grow and divide and have two identical what we call daughter cells, there's a few things that would have to happen. And this is what the cell cycle is basically all about. First off, you're going to go from one copy of DNA over here in this parent cell, and you need to copy it because each of these daughter cells they need to have their own copy, their own complete copy of the DNA. So you're going to have to copy all of that genetic information, and that takes up quite a bit of time in the cell schedule. Any organelles that that parent cell needs, you're going to have to make copies of those so that each daughter cell has its own set of organelles. The cell is going to have to physically grow. We can't have the daughter cells getting increasingly, increasingly smaller because you keep ripping the parent cells in half. There's going to have to be a period of growth in there, too, to make sure the daughter cells reach the correct size. And finally, we're going to go through a cytokinesis event where that cell actually does split in half. When we're talking about DNA, DNA can be organized as one of two ways, depending on where the cell is at in that cell cycle. Most of the time, the DNA is called chromatin. That is DNA that is unwound and loosely arranged. When DNA is chromatin, it's really not visible. It's there. It's just almost individual strands of DNA can't be seen under the microscope. It just looks a little cloudy. Uh, when DNA is arranged as chromatin, it may be, uh, it's being used in some way. Maybe it's being copied. Or maybe its genes are being used by the cell to make proteins. So when DNA is unwound as chromatin, it's not visible, and that's the part of the cell cycle when the cell is actually using the DNA and the information in it. The other way that DNA can be organized is as chromosomes. Chromosomes are what you typically see when you talk about DNA in middle school. <clears throat> Excuse me, you may have seen them as little X's. Okay, that's DNA that is tightly wound, and it gets wound up around these little proteins called histones. When DNA is arranged as chromosomes, it's not being used. Its information is not being read. It's not being copied. The DNA is being sorted out into two nuclei during the uh, mitosis part of the cell cycle, that prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Uh, chromosomes are visible under the microscopes that we use, and they do look like little X's because that's that chromatin wound up around these organizational proteins to give it a specific uh, organizational shape so that when the cell's not using the DNA as chromatin, it's not getting tangled up. You guys probably learned at one point that we have 46 chromosomes. Well, they all get unwound when the cell has to use them as chromatin. Well, you're going to have 46 pieces of DNA unwound they're being used, they can't just stay unwound as we're doing all of the mitosis stages. That's why they have to be made back here into chromosomes again so they don't get all tangled up. This is how I think of chromatin and chromosomes. All right, Chromosomes are sort of like the lights in the top picture here. Okay, think of we have 46 packages of lights. Okay, we have 46 chromosomes. Lights are not being used when they're wound up like this. No one hangs this on their house, this one right here. No one hangs this on their house and says, okay, I decorated. No, that's how you store them. 
All right, you do that so they don't get tangled as they're sitting in your attic all, all most of the year, okay? But when it comes time to use them, you unwind them into this, okay? And this would be a good analogy for chromatin, okay? These lights are unwound. You can actually see them. You can use them. And that's the difference between chromatin and chromosomes, how they're organized and is the information being used or are they just being kept wound up so there's no tangling or damage happening to them. So here we're going to draw a picture. Maybe give yourself a quarter of a page. We're going to draw a chromosome. And I want to label some of the parts for you. And this is going to help you with that homework assignment uh, that's going to be due where you have to go through the different parts of the cell cycle, uh, make a drawing, and tell me what's going on. So draw yourself a bubbly X, like the one that I've drawn here. And so the whole thing, <clears throat> we would call this whole thing a chromosome. The middle of a chromosome, where the different parts of the X join together, is called the centromere. Okay, it almost sounds like the word center a little bit, but centromere. And then a chromosome has arms to it, and they have different names. One's called the P-arm, one's called the Q-arm. We're not going to worry about that. I just want you to know that these are the arms of the chromosome. As you're doing your work and you're diagramming this out in your notebook, you're going to see that during prophase of the cell cycle, the chromatin winds up into these chromosomes. And you're going to see in metaphase, all the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. And then during anaphase, we're going to see something happening. Uh, what happens is that you get these spindle fibers attaching to each side of the centromere, and they actually pull the chromosome in half lengthwise. So they're going to tear it in half. Half of a chromosome, so like on the right-hand side of this dotted line, is called a chromatid. Okay, so that's one half of the chromosome lengthwise. And obviously over here, this would be another chromatid. Because these two chromatids came from the same chromosome, we can call them sister chromatids. Because they are exact copies of one another. They have the exact same genes on it as, uh, as, this, uh, as the other sister chromatid does. So, that's uh, the anatomy of a chromosome that you need to know. Uh, and you're going to be seeing these words as you start going through everything here. Uh, I would suggest you start studying these words because they all kind of sound the same. I mean, we have centromere, chromosome, chromatid. We have chromatin with an N, which is different from chromatid with a D. So start getting these straightened out in your mind because they all really do sound very similar. Here's a picture that just kind of shows you the relationship here between the chromatin and the chromosomes. Um, and this part of the picture here we see is the DNA double helix. And that would be what we're talking about with chromatin. It's unwound. Uh, we can actually see this says base pairs. These are the actual nucleotides in here. We're going to learn all about that structure once we get to DNA. You guys will make me a model of DNA. But that's completely unwound, just like the holiday lights get unwound. And that would be the chromatin. We're going to learn how DNA copies itself. And the DNA has to be as chromatin when that happens. And also how these genes get read to make different proteins that we need. That all has to be in the chromatin stage. As we kind of go upwards in this picture, we see over here that the DNA is being wound around these things called histones. Those are proteins that organize the DNA. Sort of like when you wrap up your holiday lights, maybe you wrap them around something to keep them nice and organized. That's what the histones are. And then it gets wound up even further and eventually takes on these X shapes, and that would be our chromosome. So down here, the chromatin really is invisible. It's like a single string of fishing line. Uh, by all accounts, it's completely invisible. 
up here with the chromosomes, you can see those because it's so much all wound up. It would be like seeing a fishing, uh, like the, the spool of a fishing rod with all the line on it. You can obviously see it. All right. So this was how uh, DNA organizes itself depending on what part of the cell cycle it's in. Okay, so this will be the homework that will be due by our next class. And remember what you need to do is you're going to have to go through each of these phases and draw me a picture and tell me what's going on with each thing. Please take careful attention to tell me what's going on with the DNA. Is it chromatin or chromosomes or is it becoming one or the other? Um, tell me what's going on with the nucleus. Is there one nucleus? Is there two nuclei? Uh, exactly what's happening there. And for the honors book, this is on pages uh, 150. And it's going to end over at... Uh, 157. Okay, so you're going to do these six stages, a picture you can actually read, with writing that you can read, and you're going to be working with your group to uh, do an assignment with this. So please keep things neat, um, and feel free to go through this again if you need to, and let me know if you have any questions.